today I am drinking this delicious Zinfandel. It says it has tasting notes of blackberry jam, orange marmalade, and a dashing accent of cracked black pepper. Also, you guys get excited because today I'm doing another food pairing and it's with lobster mac and cheese. I know. If you think I didn't go directly to the winery, which is my local wine store here in Harlem, and ask them what would pair well with macaroni and cheese, you got another thing coming. They straight up told me a Zinfandel was perfect. This is the lobster mac and cheese from Del Frisco's in New York City. Mm! Oh my God. I could drink this. Oh, it's got those buttery bits of lobster in there. <sighs> Also, I'd like to mention this one goes out to Michelle Wong because this is one of her favorite dishes at Del Frisco's. Michelle, you jealous? I don't, I don't even know what to say. I have to put this down or else I will literally inhale the entire thing. You guys get excited because today is another unpopular opinions video. I know, I can't stop myself. I just have a lot of unpopular opinions. The last one I did was a collaboration with Michelle Wong, and this round is a collaboration with two gals who I absolutely love. The first of which I talk about all the time because she's now become one of my good friends, Sarah of Better Off Red. We are blowing up Marco Polo like it's our job. Also, if you guys don't know what the app Marco Polo is, you need to get on it. It's basically an app where you make videos for each other. You can also watch your videos in real time. So that person is recording their video for you and you're sitting there watching them. It takes up like zero data on your phone. Anyway, Sarah and I are like obsessed and we probably talk like 15 times a day. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Better Off Red. I have loved her channel since it was first introduced to me. She's funny, down to earth, gorgeous. She's a ginge. So if you're a ginge, get on the ginge thing with her. She's also a great makeup artist. She's got fantastic tips. Cannot recommend her enough. The second lady I'm about to mention, Jamie French. She is actually someone that Sarah turned me on to. Sarah sent me Jamie French's tiny hands challenge. She basically uses a pair of tiny plastic hands and applies an entire face of makeup with them. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I just finished watching her assumptions video and honestly it could have been longer. I feel like she's a person who I could just sit down with and chat with for hours. She's so relatable, down to earth. She's also a fantastic makeup artist. She does some fierce looks. Oh, crrr. so we have all collaborated on our unpopular opinions and our pet peeves. Please check out their channels after you're done watching my video. I'm going to link their channels and their videos right below in the description box. All right, so let's get down to it. First question, who are some celebrities that you think smoke their own shit? Also, I know I've mentioned Michelle a couple times already in this video. I'm going to link her channel down below as well. I have to give Michelle mad props because I have never heard the term smoking your own shit. She dropped that bomb in my last unpopular opinions video and I fell out. Smoking your own shit basically means, well, you're high on yourself. You're a cocky douche. There you have it. Now listen, I love me some Lady Gaga. I really do. I will never get over a star is born. I thought she was fantastic. I think she is one of the most talented humans on the planet. However, she is over there smoking on her own shit. I just feel like she's such a chameleon and she can do anything at any time at any moment's notice. And I just feel like you kind of have to be like a little bit of a sociopath to be like that. You know what I mean? I also want to believe she's genuine, but when she gives her speeches, it's just so extra. Yeah. Another person I don't hate, but who is totes smoking in their own shit, Adam Levine. Mom, I'm sorry. I know you love him on The Voice. I know you're a huge fan. My mom won't stop talking about how adorable and amazing Adam Levine is. Yes, we all know. He'll be the first one to tell you. When he ripped his shirt off at the Super Bowl, I could not roll my eyes back into my head far enough. Adam, we get it. You're hot. Your falsetto is great. You're married to Bahati. Again, I feel like a little bit sociopathic. You know what I mean? Oh, mm. That pairing. What is a food you like that people hate and vice versa? Wait a second. I'm gonna lose half the subscribers here. Okay, macaroni and cheese is overrated. It is. It just is. Yeah, it's not that I don't like it. It's not that I'm anti macaroni and cheese. I would just rather have mashed potatoes. Macaroni and cheese, especially like homemade 
or gourmet macaroni and cheese with stuff in it. it. It's tasty, but it's like, I'm not gonna wait in line for it. I never order it on a menu, ever. I'm just like, mm. Okay, so I grew up in the South where macaroni and cheese is like pretty much a religion. And people are like, my grandma's macaroni and cheese is like the best thing you've ever tasted. It's gonna make you wanna punch yourself in the face. And then you eat it and it's like, okay. If I'm gonna eat macaroni and cheese, I, I prefer like out of the box powdered cheese, macaroni and cheese. What did you just say? Sarah, if I knew that I wasn't going to turn into Marlon Brando circa his heavy years, I would eat mac and cheese every single day. Whatever, Sarah. You guys, I love liver and onions. Take me to a diner in the middle of the Midwest and serve me up some liver and onions with some mashed potatoes. I will go in on that hard. I will get a rotisserie chicken at Whole Foods and the first thing I will do is dig my hand into the center of it and I will grab on that heart and that liver and I will chomp down. Also pairs deliciously with red wine. I love pickled herring. I don't know, probably because I'm basically a Viking and I was born in North Dakota. I'm Scandinavian and I'm just gonna get into some pickled fish. This is probably gonna upset some people. I love eating the fat off of steak. I'm sorry, some saliva just like gushed out. I love the texture of it. I love the flavor of it. I'm that person at the table who's like scoping out who hasn't eaten their fat and they put it to the side and I'm like, are you gonna, can I? Okay, cool, thanks, yeah. Yes, it's clogging my arteries, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. What is a TV show that you judge people for watching? I don't know how to tell you guys this, The Bachelor. Don't come for me in the comments. I know Miss Kate the Great is gonna judge me for this one, <laughs> but I love The Bachelor. It's honestly so bad, like it's the worst, but yet so good. And Kate, I guess, have you given it a chance? Once I start seeing those girls come out of that limo, I'm like, I have to know who he picks. I have to. I get it. Like every single conversation between The Bachelor and one of the girls is like, I like you so much. I feel so comfortable with you. I can see a future with you. You're so beautiful. But for some reason, it's just addicting. Give it a chance, Kate. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. What in the actual hell? Guys, I'm sorry. That show is so dumb. I just can't with reality TV. I've tried to watch it. I've tried to get into it. Literally all of my girlfriends are obsessed with it. What are you seeing in it? Tell me all about it. Tell me all the things. I also just can't deal with watching one person mac on like 10 other people. It just, no, me no wani. Also, this is us. I haven't watched the show. I'm not even going to attempt it and you can't make me. Every one of my girlfriends who watches that show is like so good, but it's so sad. Listen, I can get down with some sad things, but when I know that a show is literally trying to pull at your heartstrings with every single episode, no, that's dumb. I think I'm miserable enough being an actor in this godforsaken city. I don't need another reason to cry myself to sleep at night. Next question, what are your thoughts on sponsored content? It doesn't bother me. I don't care. Here's the thing, if an influencer is sponsored by a company, I believe that they are passionate about that product. I mean, could they be lying through their teeth? Sure, anyone could be. Adam Levine, Lady Gaga, people seem to love them. There are also a lot of subscribers who are requesting a certain reviews on specific brands, specific products, and that's totally fine. But I'm speaking as a gal on a budget. I don't have the funds to go out and necessarily spend a million dollars on a new collection from Estee Lauder or Urban Decay or whatever. But if a company wants to sponsor me and I love that product, it's a win-win and then the consumer gets to learn about the product as well. What is your most hated current fashion trend? Guys, I just have to say scrunchies are never okay, ever. Ashley Graham was on the red carpet interviewing people for the Oscars and she was wearing some variation on a scrunchie and I was like, what, what, what are you doing? I need you to look at your life and look at your choices. Also, also, I'm a kid who grew up in the 90s, but I don't love a lot of 90s looks. Specifically, cannot get down with a choker. You guys, it cuts off the whole sexy line of your neck. No, no. Also, I'd like you to know that I was obsessed with chokers when I was growing up and I owned like five. I remember this choker that Jennifer Aniston wore and I think it had like a heart hanging off of it. I wanted that choker so bad and I'm pretty sure my mom got me something that was really close to it. RIP chokers. Now we're on to the pet peeves portion of the video. I'm going to list my top 
three pet peeves. Admittedly, a lot of these are New York City centric, so sorry, not sorry. People who refuse to move to the middle of the subway car deserve to be thrown into oncoming traffic. Just kidding. But like, not really though. When you get on the subway car, it is usually packed with people. If it's not winning, but usually it is. If you're already in the car, it's your job to move to the middle to make physical space for the people who are coming in. That's called spatial awareness, something that about 90% of New Yorkers apparently don't have. Oh, I will be that person who walks onto the car, sees a bunch of empty space in the middle, and I will call you out. Excuse me, hi, guy with the red hat, could you please move in? Because I literally can't get on the subway until you do. Just be aware, that's all I'm asking. Second pet peeve, and yes, it has to do the subway again. I was sitting down on the subway the other day on my way to a hair appointment and this seemingly very sweet woman, probably in like her mid fifties, got on. Now I can see that she's taking an extra long time to get to her seat, which is fine, but I can already sense that the subway is going to take off and she's going to be standing. I'm sitting in a corner seat with no one next to me. As I predicted, the subway starts to move because you know, that's what subways do. They move so you can get places. And she literally falls with all of her speed and all of her weight back into my neck and my shoulder. I'm talking about like 160 pounds of dead weight as though someone threw a corpse onto my neck. New York City has given me the fastest ninja reflexes I could ever imagine. I was like, Hah! all of my arm strength, I shoved her off of me. If I hadn't, I'd probably have, I don't know what, a broken neck. She of course was horrified and she apologized and I was appreciative of that. But also, what if I wasn't like an able-bodied Viking? What if I would have been a five-year-old child or like a frail elderly woman? You could have maimed someone. All I'm saying is when you visit New York City, unless you're a professionally trained dancer or you have a black belt in karate, please just grab a hold of something. <sighs> Also, I literally just had ranted about this to Better Off Red. I got on the subway to come home today. I was at 81st Street, which is the Natural History Museum stop. I'm talking like maybe 30, 40 tourists just packed on. They have no awareness. They're like bumping into people. It's a whole situation. None of them are holding on to anything. The train starts to move and all of them were like, whoa! <laughs> We all know we're getting on the subway for it to take us someplace. The fact that you haven't grabbed onto a pole doesn't make you cute or novel, it makes you annoying. And just know that actual New Yorkers wanna murder you. Okay, thanks. Oh, I'm just really unleashing here, aren't I? Third pet peeve is people who talk slash are on their phone in movies. Shh. If you are a person who is on your phone or who is yammering away in a movie that I paid $15 to see, you best believe I will say something, thereby ruining your movie going experience and mine. Because that 45 minutes after you call someone out is a living hell. I will just see people scrolling through Instagram and Facebook with all their might. You could have literally stayed home and watched Netflix. Why are you here? <sighs> Okay, I think I'm done. You guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you are enjoying my content, please do subscribe, share, and like, and click that little bell right beneath the video. That is going to alert you anytime I drop a new video. You guys, this is so fun for me to do a part two of this. I could probably do like a 10 part series of unpopular opinions and pet peeves. I was so excited to be doing it with these two awesome channels please check out Better Off Red and Jamie French. Again, I'm going to link both of their channels and their videos below in the description box. Please subscribe to them, you won't regret it. Yeah. Okay, bye.